What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Galaxy Tab S9. Now this is one that I've been waiting on. Every year I like picking up the new uh, Tab series. Huge fan of these Android tablets and you probably know that if you're a regular viewer of the channel. And last year when Samsung released the Tab S8, I actually picked up the Tab S8 Ultra. But throughout the year I found it a little too bulky, it's got a 14.6 inch display. So this year I went with the regular Tab S9 with an 11 inch display. But keep in mind they still offer the S9 Plus and the S9 Ultra. But all three of them are going to perform the same. They have the same CPU and it is an upgrade over last year. Because with last year's S8 we got the Snapdragon Gen 1. This year we have the Snapdragon Gen 2. And in terms of GPU and CPU performance, we are seeing a really nice increase here, making the new Galaxy Tab S9 the most powerful Android tablet on the market. Design really hasn't changed much from the old S8. We've still got, you know, a tablet design. It's really hard to do much more than this unless you want to add some RGB or something around back. It's got a 13 megapixel rear camera and they offer this in two different colors, beige and graphite. Obviously, we've got the graphite version here. Taking a look around the tablet, down here we have the three pogo pads. This will allow us to connect their uh, external keyboard if you wanted to use that. Quad speaker design, tuned by AKG, and it does support Dolby Atmos. Over here on this side, we've got our volume rocker and our power button slash fingerprint sensor. So we can log in super quickly here with Android 13 running on the Tab S9. And finally, down here, we've got our other two speakers and USB Type-C. This is 3.2 and it supports video out. This also supports Samsung DeX. Overall, super quick interface. It's running Android 13, and we expected it to be a lot faster than last year's. We've got that new Snapdragon Gen 2, so we can basically do anything we want here. And this new 11-inch AMOLED display is absolutely beautiful. I'm just a huge fan of AMOLED or OLED displays, and this looks great. When it comes to the specs, like I mentioned, we've got the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. It's an octa-core SoC, and we've got one Cortex-X3 core up to 3.36 gigahertz, two A715 cores at 2.8, two A710 cores at 2.8, and three A510 cores at 2 gigahertz. For the GPU, we've got the Adreno 740. You can pick this up with either 8 or 12 gigabytes of RAM, and along with that, you get 128 gigabytes of storage with the 8 gig or 256 with the 12 gig model. The display is awesome here. We've got an 11 inch dynamic AMOLED. It does up to 120 Hertz and supports HDR 10 with a resolution of 1600 by 2560. I mean, it looks fantastic. Quad speaker design tuned by AKG also supports Dolby Atmos, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.3, 13 megapixel rear camera, 12 megapixel front camera, an 8400 milliamp hour battery with 45 watt quick charging capabilities, and this is running Android 13 with One UI 5.1 right out of the box. So yeah, with the new Tab S9, we've got more than enough power to do anything that Android can. I mean, this is a very, very quick CPU we have in here. Full access to Google Play. We've also got all of our Samsung apps. And in the box, basically what you're gonna get with this is a charger cable and the S Pen. So it does come with an S Pen. I'm not an artist or anything like that, but you know, I do enjoy using this for handwriting. You can convert it right over to text if you need to. We can customize our quick app access bar over here. And I did want to give you a quick demo here, just this pen in action. And one thing I actually like about these Samsung tablets is it gives you some sound, a little bit of feedback while you're drawing or even writing. So it does feel like you're kind of writing on paper. It might just be in my head, but it seems that, you know, I can actually write a lot better on the Samsung tablets than I can on the iPad. But I wanted to give you a quick demo here of an awesome stick figure, not an artist whatsoever. This does work out really well. And, you know, if you're into using pens with your tablets, just keep in mind, it does come with it. Widevine support here is level one. So across the board, we can do HD content from any of our favorite apps. And I did want to give you a quick demo of some 4K video playback. We're definitely not working with a 4K display on this unit, but I always like to set it up to 4K just to show you that it can power through it. We'll also turn stats for nerds on. And throughout this video here, we're not going to get any drop frames. Those quad speakers put out a lot of sound. In my opinion, these Samsung tablets don't sound quite as good as the new iPad Pros, but it's getting really, really close. And since these are tuned by AKG, you can definitely expect some awesome audio. This does make for a really awesome media playback device. We've got that Widevine Level 1, so uh, HD throughout any app you want to run on here that requires Widevine has DRM for their HD video, then we can do it here. And it doesn't matter if you want to stream it or run it natively from a micro SD card or internal storage, there's more than enough power here to do 4K video. 
Now, the next thing I wanted to take a look at were some benchmarks that I ran on this, and I've been testing out the Galaxy S line of tablets for a few years now. I've also got some scores from the S7 and the S8 that I kind of wanted to compare here. And first up, we've got Geekbench 6 on the new Tab S9, single core 2151, multi 5780. The older Tab S7 used the Snapdragon 865 and single core on that was 937, multi 2822. And the Tab S8 with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 came in with a single core of 1220, multi 3511. And keep in mind, all of my testing was done with the Tab S8 Ultra. Testing out the GPU here with 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme on the S9, we scored a 3,889. On the Tab S8 Ultra, 2,110. So we're also looking at a significant jump in GPU performance, but the final one I ran here was an 2-2. The new S9 scored a 1,606,930. I mean, this is a really great score here for an 2-2 on Android. The old Tab S7, we got a 640,000. And the Tab S8 came really close to getting that 1 million, but we were only at 947,997. So across the board with these synthetics, just kind of averaging everything out, looks like we're seeing around a 40% increase in CPU performance over the S8, a 68% increase over the S7, and that's on the CPU. And when it comes to the GPU, around 40% over the S8, which is a significant jump. Now, I did mention that this does have Samsung DeX built-in, and for the longest time on their tablets, we can actually run Samsung DeX on the built-in screen. If you're not familiar with DeX, basically, it's more of a desktop interface. It's still Android, but, uh, you know, using a keyboard and mouse is really the way to go. And if you're interested in this, definitely keep an eye on the channel, because I will have a full video coming up. You can use this over HDMI, and that's usually how I do it. So uh, I've got a lot of great stuff that I want to test here with Samsung DeX. Basically, we can turn this thing into a desktop PC. But so far, you know, we've taken a look at just the overall UI performance, ran some benchmarks. Now it's time to get into some real-world gaming and emulation performance because that's where the Tab S9 shines with that new Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. We are seeing a really great increase when it comes to gaming and emulation on this device. And the first game we have here is Minecraft. Obviously, it's going to run it really well, but I wanted to show you GPU Watch. You can enable this on Galaxy devices from developer options. So it'll give us the CPU load, GPU load, and real-time frame rate. With something like Minecraft, you're not going to have to turn anything down. I'm actually at 18 chunks right now, fancy graphics on, and we're running at a constant 60. Really great performance, and I knew it was going to run at full speed. Next up, we've got Call of Duty Mobile. I'm at high settings. Now, I did try to go to the maximum frame rate, which usually unlocks this to 90, but I don't think the S9 is whitelisted yet. Once it is, there's no doubt that this would run it at 90 FPS. And by the way, I am using an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth. Other games that are going to run really well on here, PUBG, Diablo Immortal. I mean, basically, any game that's available on Google Play will run at full speed, including Genshin Impact. High settings, 60 FPS. Every once in a while we get a dip, but that's kind of normal. Really wish that the developers would pay a little more attention to Android. We still don't have controller support after years of this being on the market. And I know that a device like this with some optimizations could run this at very high settings, 60 FPS. But again, we just don't get that much attention. They do, uh, do a lot with iOS. I guess they're making more money over there. Not exactly sure what's going on, but even just getting controller support with Android would be really nice. So yeah, I mean, the Tab S9 with that Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 is going to run any Android game that you can get from the market. There's really no doubt about it. But what I wanted to check out was some emulation, and this thing is amazing. First up, we've got some GameCube using the Dolphin emulator, 720p, F-Zero GX, one of the harder ones to emulate, on the hardest track, Firefield, running at 60fps. This is great, and the fact that we can actually go up to 720p is awesome. Something like Mario Sunshine, you can do 1080p on the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. I had to test out one more GameCube game. This one really gives a lot of devices a run for its money. We've never really been able to run this at full speed on Android just yet, but we're so close here with the Tab S9. Rogue Squadron, native resolution, so we're not at 720p, Vulcan back in. And you can see we do get some dips. It's not as bad as it used to be. I mean, even just trying this on the 888, this falls right on its face around 20 FPS. We are so close to full speed. Moving over to some 3DS using the Citra emulator, we've got DOA Dimensions, 3X Resolution, and this utilizes the OpenGL backend. 
We still don't have Vulcan support with this emulator, and uh, it would be nice because it would work a lot better on lower end devices, but as you can see here, it runs it perfectly. PS2 is another one we had to test. I'm using Ether SX2, 3X resolution, Vulcan back in, Gran Turismo 4. This is one of those games that's kind of mid-range. Some devices handle it better than others, but uh, at 3X, we are at 60 FPS. This is a really playable experience. But there is a harder one to emulate here, especially when it comes to this emulator on Android, and that's God of War 2. And here it is, still using the Vulcan back end, still at 3x resolution, and originally I went into this at 4x, hoping that we could run it at full speed there. Unfortunately, I just had to drop it down. It still looks great here, and you know, seeing how these two games run with the PS2 emulator, the easier to emulate stuff can go up to 5x. Crash Bandicoot, Kingdom Hearts 2, you're going to have a great time with PS2 emulation on the Tab S9. But I'd say the most impressive thing here was Switch emulation using Yuzu. You can pick up Yuzu from Google Play. We've got Cuphead. This is definitely an easier one to emulate. And right now we are in handheld mode, but it will run this game at 1080p or dock mode because it is easier. But so far, I've been having a really great time with Switch emulation on this device. And there was one more I wanted to show off here, which I thought was really impressive. Now, of course, we get those dips under 60, but you know, seeing this game run on an Android device is still pretty awesome. And as time goes on, Yuzu development will increase on Android, and we can definitely see a big jump in performance on the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. But the way it is right now, there are a lot of playable games. Overall, the new Galaxy Tab S9 is definitely the best Android tablet on the market, and that usually seems to be the case every year with Samsung. They definitely put a lot into it. This AMOLED display is absolutely beautiful. We've got tons of performance with that Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. And I was really impressed by what kind of gains we got over the S8. I actually didn't think it would be that big of a jump going from the Gen 1 to the Gen 2 Snapdragon. But yeah, I mean, CPU and GPU performance has definitely been increased here. And I'm really enjoying the Tab S9. Now that's going to wrap it up for my first video. I will have a couple more. So if there's anything else you want to see running on this, just let me know in the comments below. I will have a full DEX video. I might do a dedicated emulation video, seeing what kind of performance we got so far. But, uh, you know, if there's anything else, let me know down below. And if you're interested in learning more, maybe picking one up, I'll leave some links in the description. You can get it on Amazon. You can pick it up from Best Buy or Samsung's website. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. And like always, thanks for watching.